Hi guys, Dan here. Welcome to this video. Today we're going to have a look at the SRC GT1 Pro. You probably remember the SRC wheels from the wireless uh, wheel review that I did, um, but this is a wired version with a funky switch. Let's have a look at it. So as always, little disclaimer, SRC did send this wheel for me to review, but they don't get to see the review before it's posted. And of course, as always, all the opinions are my own. So what we have here is a button box that sells for 439 euros plus taxes or the whole wheel for 489. There are several wheels available, check the website. Um, I think everybody will find a wheel they like. And it is a USB wheel and it's compatible with PC and should work with any simulation. The USB cable it comes with unfortunately is not removable. It's a fixed cable. I wish it was removable, but it's not the case here. The cable also is relatively short, but that's not a big problem because it comes with an extension cord and a little 3D printed adapter where you can put it in. So um, comes in here and then this little thing here goes on top of it. So you cannot unplug the cable. It has a little bit of movement, but it's not disconnecting. I'm probably also not using the correct extension they ship with it. But yeah, and then you can also mount this to the rig either with these screws or there are also little slots in there so you can use the provided Velcro. Mount this to the rig and then cable length is no problem. But still, I personally wish it was a removable cable and it was a little bit longer, but this is also working fine. So as I mentioned earlier, it comes with plenty of options of rims that you can buy from SRC from 290 to 350 millimeters. And it will probably also work with most third party wheels that you can buy elsewhere. I haven't tried, but um, the layout of the button box looks to be very compatible with most wheels out there. Only thing you gotta make sure is like they use a 70 millimeter pattern, but I think that's the case for basically any wheel. So the one SRC provided to me is made out of leather. Feels very good, soft to the touch. I really like the leather wheels because the Alcantara are suede, suede wheels. They kind of look bad really quickly and that's not an issue with leather. I mean, the grip is not as high as with Alcantara, for example. But if you use gloves, it's really not a big problem. Okay, so similar to the wireless wheel that I reviewed, we also have a sandwich design with a carbon fiber front, a 3D printed middle housing and a carbon fiber back. Let's quickly measure three millimeter on the back, 3.5 maybe, it's hard to measure. And two millimeter on the front and then the sandwich, the whole thing is 35 millimeters. Again, the 3D print, is good quality. You can see the typical layer lines that you get from 3D prints, but I think it's not really a big issue. But also like on the wireless, I wish the edges were maybe a bit chamfered. It's not the most comfortable on the edges, but then again, it's not really a big issue because those are parts that you most likely won't touch. Um, but yeah, I wanted to point that out. Same goes for the pedal shifters. Same shifters. They are also being used in, in a real race car, by the way. They have a little video of that on their website. They feel good. There's very, very, very minimal play, if at all. Um, they feel clicky. They are not the loudest in the world, which I like. I don't know if it's like dampened. I don't see any dampers. So I think it's still metal to metal contact, but still it's not super loud. The distance of the shift pedal can be adjusted with these little spacers they have on here. Also comes with uh, longer screws and the spacer if you want to use them. Also other pedals. I'm not sure if it comes with, with the button box or with, with the whole assembly. Um, but there are shorter pedals available if you prefer that. These are pretty big, but I like, I like it. Feels good. On the front we find eight push buttons. Also the same as on the wireless wheels. Two with a big button guard and six with smaller aluminum rings around it. Um, they feel nice. They remind me of the Otto P9, maybe with a little lower activation force, but still better than the average of wheels that I have tested. You can exchange the button cap if you want to, just like unscrew the, the button guard. And then if you pull on it, basically the guard or the knob comes uh, off. And then they send a, a box with several colors. I kind of like the default colors, so I, I just didn't change them. Um, and then screw the button guard back on and then you can install color of your choice. You also get a little sticker sheet. Mine's a little bit... It doesn't come like this. I wasn't like being careful with storage. Um, the quality of the stickers is okay. I've seen better stickers. I've seen worse. Um, the round ones are for the buttons and then these ones are for... Well, you can use them for whatever you want. Okay, what you also will find on the front is a CTS-288 rotary encoder with a push button. It feels decent. There are better rotary encoders out there. I think the resistance could be a little bit higher. That would be nicer. 
but it's still perfectly usable. I think uh, the CTS are actually made for audio applications where you don't want to have like crackles when, when turning the knob. But for sim racing, I think, for example, the Burns encoders, they are cheaper and feel a bit better. So maybe that's a thing to consider. Maybe changing in future products. Um, as always, you can use it as two encoders or as one encoder with push. For iRacing, for example, it works out of the box that you have like one function like this and then push down and, and turn it for another function. But you can also get it for pretty much any game using joy to key SRC has a great video on their website how to do that. On the other hand, we have a seven way funky switch. I think every sim racer knows it. It's up, down, left, right, encoder and push button. Seven functions, super nice for black boxes. They are using the typical Alps funky switch here and it's very comparable to other wheels. Electronics are done nicely. We have a custom PCB here where all the buttons are connected and then the, the Bodnar shift light indicator unit. Uh, nothing really to complain about here. It's done very cleanly and looks good. The wheel does come with three year of warranty, but I'm very sure it will probably last you forever. The build is great. Electronics look good and I won't worry about anything here. Okay, then on top of the wheel here, we have this Bodnar SLI module. It looks a little bit like back to the 80s, to be honest, but it's actually super useful. You have 13 RPM LEDs. The color is not adjustable here. We have four green ones, five red ones, four blue ones. I wish they were RGB to be able to match the LEDs of the cars you are driving. But then again, it's not really a deal breaker. It's, it's fine and it's typically in your peripheral vision anyways. In the middle, we have a gear indicator, a seven segment display, a little bit bigger than the other ones. And then on the sides, we have two six digit seven segment displays that you can use to show whatever you want, RPM, lap time. You can basically configure in the software whatever you want to show here. Okay, this seems basic to what other wheels have to offer. But actually, I think this might even be more useful. You get the most important info. It's always in your peripheral vision. You don't have to scan the display to find the information that you want to have. The wheel works out of the box, so you don't need a driver. But obviously, to control the SLI, you need a software. You can use uh, Fanal Ads, SLI Max or other software. I personally used Fanal Ads and I'll quickly show you what you can configure there. So after you download the software, from the website, this is what you will see. And uh, the most important things are advanced car settings. When you when you're in the game, you will see different cars here. And here you can basically configure which LED should be shown. And if you go to hardware and then SLI Pro, this is where you can configure all these little displays here. So for example, here you can it show, will show the fuel percentage. Here it will show the speed. Well, you get the idea. And then the, there are all these, these parameters that you can show. Uh, it also shows how many digits it will take up. So speed is three digits, fuel percentage obviously also three. And then you have these six status LEDs. So the blue one here, for example, is being used for signal left, upshift and an ABS warning. Yellow is fuel warning, yellow flag, Red is warning for battery damage engine. Uh, yeah, you can configure it to your liking and then just like go with that. The software is very easy to use. It runs in the background. I didn't see any performance impact of the software on the sim. Uh, very nice. I've been using this wheel quite a bit. Um, it feels very good. When you're driving, like the size 320 for me is pretty much perfect. 310, 320 for a round rim, really nice. The buttons are very good to reach. Maybe the ones on the inside here are a little bit harder, but then again, it's just like you have a limited amount of space that you can use here. You can use this for pretty much anything from F1 cars to oval racing, rally. Even though for rally, I think a, a proper round rim is better than a D-shape, but it's a very universal fit for pretty much anything. To sum it up, I've had a very good experience with this. For the price, I think it's a great wheel. I mean, of course, you can get wheels with better build quality and fancier materials if you spend more, but I think for the price, this is perfectly fine. I like the attention to detail that have been spent here. I like the display on top, even though it seems basic, it's actually really useful. And overall, it's a wheel I can recommend. And if you want to check it out, link in the description below to the shop. But that's it for the review. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, maybe like the video, subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to chat, we have a Discord community, link in the description as well. And I'm also streaming on Twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. Maybe follow the channel and come say hi when I'm live. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.